Hey guys, uh, today I wanted to make a quick video um, about my armor stacker, kind of go over the gear, uh, talents, uh, and um, different interactions um, that you get on the armor stacker for, um, I guess, uh, people who are kind of new to playing this build, or uh, maybe you kind of want to build one, but uh, you're not really sure how things work, or you maybe, you know, uh, copied uh, some POVs from PO Nin POE Ninja and you are kind of stuck, uh, you know, maybe like you can't cast your grace or having some problems getting the build running or, you know, want to know how to optimize it a bit more. Uh, and hopefully this will kind of go through some of the some of those uh, points and uh, help you help you guys. Okay, so uh, I think first of all, we're going to do a showcase. I recorded a simulacrum wave 30, so just play that. Um, this build can do pretty much anything in the game once you get your mage blood. Um, but you know, simulacrum is uh usually what I start playing this build in, so I thought make a good showcase. I mean, as you can see, wave 30, it <laughs> uh, looks like wave one, you know, it's these guys uh they don't stand a chance, right? So let's see, we get a boss. Okay, so we got the bosses to spawn. Let's see if we can one shot them. Nice ball smite, and yeah. Closest, you know, one shot. Omniphobia, yeah. Uh, ball smite's awesome, basically. <laughs> so yeah, that's basically wave 30. Um, Alright, so what? how does this all work, right? Um, we're basically using the uh, replica Dream Feather. Um, this sword gives us more attack damage for, you know, per our 450 armor. And we have quite a bit of armor. We are at almost 1.6 million armor. And you can imagine, you know, that's a insane amount of damage, right? Um, and then on top of that, we're using Doriani's prototype to, you know, make enemies have lightning resistance equal to ours. In this case, 100, minus 154 um lightning resistance um uh just to quickly go over all the uniques aside from that those two we're using march of the legion um we're using this because of the divine blessing support that's built into the gem uh, allowing us to get a level 34 grace um uh it armor stacking stacker it's a little bit misleading in the fact that we actually want to stack evasion over armor due to the fact that grace uh not grace um evasion gets scaled two times whereas armor only gets scaled once so uh, more of like an evasion stacker in a sense um we're also using uh shaper's touch these gloves are uh they give like a lot of good thing stats to the build, right? So you get accuracy, energy shield, evasion, attack damage. Um, very hard to probably craft a pair of gloves that gives the same amount of stats as uh, these gloves do. Uh, we're using Aegis Aurora to take advantage of the ES on block and as well as the plus five to maximum cold res to help us hit the uh, 90 cap. Um, amulet, we, uh, best in slot probably, is uh, Ashes of the Stars. Uh, you don't need a perfectly rolled one like I do. Uh, you should prob probably get the quality up to at least to 30. I think the quality roll is the most important. Uh, you don't really need the max reservation efficiency roll. I mean, you think like, you know, our aura stacker, right? You want tons of reservation efficiency, but... Um, you look on the tree, I'm not even taking all of them. You know, I get another one here, I get some more three points here. So, you you know, if you don't want to buy a max roll, you can just get the 30 quality and even just like a 10% and get the other 10% from like, you know, taking another passive point maybe like another one here too um i guess we can talk about mage blood 
this belt uh, pretty much made for armor sackers, I think. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's worth armor sacker, probably the only build in the game that gets an insane amount of damage from using the mage blood due to the fact that we always have our flasks up and we can use the increased effect enchants and uh, craft on them. Uh, for our helmet, we're using a synthesized helmet with the 15% increased effect of non curse auras. Uh, this helmet is uh, Ill for a non uh, Hubris circle at, circle at base. You can get it for about maybe 15 divines. I think I was I just had a search going for it. Uh, you you probably want a energy shield base, and like we mentioned before, um, we're an invasion stacker, so <laughs> you don't really want an armor base. Uh, if you don't if you can't find a energy shield base. And go for an evasion base or uh, evasion energy shield base. A last resort, you go for armor, armor base. Um, yeah, like something like this. This is like, I mean, it looks really good, right? But this, this one would be way better because um, evasion basically has double effect, so. Keep that in mind when you're buying your helmet. Uh, for the rings, we want uh, Grace Implicit uh, Synthesized Rings, and we just craft these for... Uh, the main thing you're looking for is either Intelligence, Strength, Energy Shield, and then I guess some Resistance, right? Because we are stacking a lot of minus Resistance to uh, get this minus 155, so you gotta cover, you know, get a lot of Resist on your gear. Um, as far as like stats go, you want, I guess, intelligence first, maybe strength next. Strength gives you a lot of energy shield from the Shaper's Touch. And intelligence, of course, gives you energy shield, and it also gives you uh, evasion and uh, accuracy. So, very good stat to have. Oh, and <laughs> I'm using this relic. Uh, I found uh, strike skills target additional enemy. Uh, very sad that it rolled only one, but I guess still better than nothing, right? Uh, go over gem links real quick. Go over the smite. Uh, text is so big that it's like, it doesn't even fit on, fit on the screen. And if I take it out, oh, there we go. So, 2120, Vol, Phantasmal Smite. You definitely want to get the Vol version. Um, it, even just a 21 Vol Normal Smite. Or, you know, a 2020 Phantasmal Vol Smite is better than getting a 2120 Phantasmal Smite, in my opinion, because um, if you saw on like the showcase, let me just go back real quick. Um, we like one shot Kosis. Uh, I don't know, a little bit back here. With one Vol Smite, we basically one shot him right there. So that and that's the power of Vol Smite when you get a lot of mobs around, um, you just like blow up the entire screen, right? So very cool. Um, we're running Ruthless because I have this relic. If not, I'd run uh, Ancestral Call. Uh, and then uh, wait, multi strike damage on full life, uh, el elemental damage with attacks. And then uh, this link is a little bit, uh, you can kind of do whatever you want. You can do. Uh, elemental focus you can run added lightning or if you're running ancestral call you can run ruthless here too okay um i guess we'll go over grace this uh this is where people get stuck i think quite a bit is how do i cast my grace it's, you know i have nothing more to give right nine nine hundred and seventy four mana right so basically short short answer is we're reducing grace's mana cost to zero or, you know, 99% on the non-Mage Blood version. So, when we do this with, first of all, the Flask, um, Craft, Reduce Mana Cost of Skills during Effect. And, uh, Divergent Inspiration, which gives 44%, and then, uh, Anomalous Increased Duration, which gives 20%. And that'll give us, you know, a zero mana grace. So this is how you cast your, uh, Blessing. 
um, you know, maybe this, this kind of tech can probably be incorporated into other builds as well. If you want to use a blessing, but you don't want to use, um, uh, Eldritch battery, like, uh, I know a lot of builds, uh, have started doing recently use your, you know, your yes to cast your blessing. But, uh, with this setup here, um, you can get it down to zero mana and you don't really need to use the boots too. You just won't be able to use, uh, empower. Um, okay, so that's the Grace setup. Um, the rest of our auras are pretty much, you know, just self-explanatory. You can check the POB. You don't need all of these alternate quality auras. Um, the only mandatory ones are these two, two uh, the Divergent Inspiration and Anomalous Increased Duration. Uh, because without these, we can't cast our Grace. And uh, yeah, everything else, uh, you can check the POV um, for that. For bossing, uh, for uber bosses or sanctum, I will use uh, flame dash and I'll take out my shield and use two swords. Um, because, oh, actually for sanctum, I use two swords. For bossing, I'll keep the shield, right? Because, you know, sanctum, you don't need a shield. Okay, so that's the gear. Um, should we go over the flasks? Um, I'll just like mouse over these. You can check it in the POB, but you know, pretty standard uh, flask setup here. Nothing really special. Um, okay, so let's check out the POB now and we'll go into uh, the uh, skill tree. So skill tree, very... Um, I'd say typical Aura Stacker, we were rushing the clusters and picking up all of the um, reservation nodes, basically, right? So we got one, two, three, and four down here, and then we anoint Charisma. Um, aside from that, I guess we'll start from the bottom. We take a Wavering Stance. Uh, we're starting out from the Duelist area because we have Path of Duelist. Let's just start uh, from over... Um, Pathing from over here. Come down, take the large cluster slot, get iron reflexes. This is like, you know, what? 68%? <laughs> okay, let's just say 70% of our damage is iron reflexes. And this is because of the evasion getting converted into armor. Um, so it's getting double scaled twice. Um, I'm running three one passive voices. These are completely unnecessary. You can run a two, a three passive. You can run a large cluster, an eight passive large cluster. Those are fine. Um, having voices just gives you one, two, three, thirty percent more R effect. That's it. But I guess uh, uh, if you want to hit um, two hundred percent, then yeah, you're gonna need uh, at least. A a three passive voices, uh, two of them, because you can get up to you can get up to like two point eight, I think, right? With uh, without these voices, um, if you have a perfect brutal, uh, brutal restraint like mine and you have the Eternal Struggle amulet, then you can, yeah, you don't need the voices to get hit the uh, three, um, 200% R effect. Anyways, yeah. I think if I actually change to a three passive, so that means I would have three more three more points, right? I'd, I'd have to spend three more points here. I, all I'd lose is this, you know? So all I'm losing, the only thing that these voices are giving me is 400 ES, 350 ES, and some block, you know? So, I mean, that's that's what the voices is giving me. Well, actually that and this, right? But you can get the same power with just uh, three passive voices. You just won't have as much energy shield and, you know, you won't be able to block your, uh, cap your block that easily. Um, I guess, you know, you can get a double corrupted shield might as well buy voices at that point, I think. I think that's kind of expensive. Okay, so um, go for the top part of the tree. 
I'm only taking these three nodes because of my uh, brutal restraint. Uh, it's giving me increased R effect here. Um, so depending on your brutal restraint, you'll take these nodes or maybe this node or maybe these if you want. You know, it really depends on what uh, jewel you get. <coughs> Uh, like I mentioned before, running uh, Melding of the Flesh. This is giving us minus 80 to all res, which is um, why we're able to actually get minus 158. Lightning res, uh, 154. And this uh, lets us get 90 fire and cold, uh, cold res. Um, up here, Lightning Mastery. Very important. It's like another 18% more damage. Um, we're also taking elemental overload. Um, and then down here, we're picking up glancing blows. And with the third of up here, you can actually take divine shield with this too if you want. So it's very nice. Uh, very nice uh, third of hope. Divine shield. I guess we can talk about this too. Uh, this is extremely strong on lower damage builds, I'd say. Uh, when mobs are actually still hitting you for quite a lot, you know, quite a lot of the time. Uh, you get a lot of ES regen. I think I got up to about 6,500 or, or more um, on my armor sector when I was using this. Um, but, you know, when, when you get more damage, like, you know, everything dies before it can hit you most of the time. So it's this, uh, it doesn't, it's not really that impactful, you know, once you have a lot of damage. So I'd say pre-mage blood. This is a definite like th must. Like I, I would always use this, but once you get the mage blood, uh, you don't really need it that much anymore. And that is it for the talent tree. Go over ascendancy. First of all, we take champion for the uh, aura effect taunt. Uh, taunted enemies take ten percent increased damage. It's like having a you know permanent ball of faith. Uh, we get intimidate. Which is very nice too. Take Path of the Duelist for the more talent points. Uh, and so we can path down from here. Um, now if you can find a way to get stun immunity, you can actually path up this way for about the same amount of points and pick up another large cluster slot here and you know get another 30% R effect basically. Um, so that's something to think about. Up till now, I had been doing that on small clusters, you know, crafting with harvest, but you know, that's not in the game anymore. So, um, getting stun immunity, immunity is very important. So I'm just sticking with the setup for now. Um, aside from that, we take the Necromancer Ascendancy. This is uh, the best Ascendancy for Scion if you're our stacker, because, mainly because the attack and cast speed you get from this counts as an aura and gets scaled by our aura effect. So for me, this is actually 4% because I have 200%. Uh, actually, is it? Let me can see. All right. Um, it gets scaled by aura effect, basically, right? So 2 times 200. Okay, well, math, right? <laughs> I think it's like what? So you get 4%. Um... Some very quick math, math, maths, you know. All right, um, for the Watcher's Eye, I'm using a, the main mod that I'm looking for for my Watcher's Eyes is the extra, you take reduced extra damage from critical strikes from what, while affected by determination. Um, especially for Simulacrum, there's a lot of crit mods uh, and they will, you will get one shot pretty much, you know, um, without this mod. Other mods, uh, kind of nice, not important. You can see it's only giving me about, you know, 2.5% damage. So if you can get one with like Lightning Pen, it's probably going to be more damage. Or, you know, Attack Speed Precision, uh, ES, ES on Hit, very strong. Uh, ES from Mana Clarity, very nice. Um, or, you know, even if you want, you can get like Phasing while you're affected by Haste. You get Permanent Phasing, you know, stuff like that. So very flexible, kind of pick whatever you want. Um, and that is pretty much it for the skills. OK, 
Okay, so I think we covered pretty much everything on the Mage Blood version. We did the gear, uh, skills, and the talent and ascendancy. So now we can check out the uh, pre Mage Blood version. Um, so this is what I was running um, to farm Wave 30 Simulacrum from day four. Uh, this league, and this is what I farmed my mage blood on. You can see the talent tree is pretty much exactly the same, except we are running different uh, large clusters. Uh, we are running one attack, um, increase attack damage while holding a shield cluster for um, martial prowess for attack speed accuracy. And uh, pro, pro, prodigious def defense. I don't know how to say this, guys. But basically, a lot of it, uh, block, spell block, and uh, attack damage. The clusters are the same, basically. Um, you don't need you don't need the expensive ones. You gotta get a uh, eye level sixty eight and above, or the introspection node. Uh, aside from that, the tree is basically the same. You can see here, I'm taking, I'm not taking these three points here because I have a different brutal restraint that has R effect here. So taking this here, I'm also getting my uh, grace mana cost fixed with uh, these, this jewel here, five percent reduced mana cost to skills, and this one here, another five percent. See, like very basic jewels, but they get the job done. I uh, don't have to pay like a bunch of money for these because um, I mean if you're gonna farm a mage blood you're gonna replace these so I mean anything that has like I'd say you know resistance corrupted blood uh, very nice buy I think um, I think I eventually did pick up uh, divine shield on this build uh, just not in the POV it's like a snapshot of like right right after I finished wave 30 I, I made this uh, POV so I was using this. Uh, let's see what else. Okay, so for the other two clusters, you want a some lightning damage clusters. There's two different ones you can get. You can get the scintillating idea idea, which is you get more mana and some lightning pen, versus getting a storm drinker, which is uh, like three percent more lightning pen and some es leech. So. You can kind of choose what you want. If you want a little bit more damage, or if you want extra mana, so it's a little bit easier to, you know, reserve precision, vitality, and those those uh, things, right? Um, okay, so that's pretty much um, all that's different on the talent tree. Um, we can go into the items. The skills are pretty much the same. Uh, Hey, uh, what do you call it? Grace has the exact same setup. I don't think I was even using a uh, power because I just didn't want to spend the money for it then. I didn't need to. I always just um, gear up my character until it's able to comfortably farm whatever it is, whatever it is I'm farming. In this case, Malacrum, wave 30. Um, this was enough uh, damage and defense to consistently clear wave 30 around 30 minutes per simulacrum so uh, I didn't really feel the need to spend the money on the empower and instead just farmed up for the uh, mage blood uh, okay so the only thing that's different is first our helmet is different we're not using a synthesized helmet we are using just a normal hubris circlet with a smite enchant and we have where we elder uh, craft it with the Eldritch currency for the reservation efficiency and the other mod just really doesn't matter. I think there's a reduced mana cost of attacks which would probably be better than elemental weakness curse effect because that does like absolutely nothing. Uh, other than that uh, we have you know you just spam essence of uh, loathing for the reservation efficiency and try to get it good. Uh, energy, sh energy shield and resistance roll. Um, armor is the same, gloves are the same, boots, uh, amulet, uh, a little bit different. Uh, you definitely want to use the eternal struggle all the way up till when you have mage blood. 
um, because uh, well basically this amulet is pretty much the same as a ashes of the stars so we can see here actually wait well the main reason you want this amulet on lower budgets is because of the aura effect you can get on it so um let's let's check purity of ice so if you look at purity of ice it's got a 1.83 aura effect mod and we are able to hit 90 auras uh, this is with our purity of ice being level 21 and we have it in a plus two AOE gem item, in this case our gloves, and so it makes it a level 23 purity of ice. Um, and so with level 23 purity of ice and 2.8 aura effect mod, we're able to hit 90 auras. Uh, that's with the um, Aegis Aurora giving us under 5%, right? So if, for example, we were to take this amulet off, we'll be at 89. So, um, my brutal restraint had, uh, 8%, 8%, so it's 16% here. So you basically want a minimum of 16%, uh, R effect on your brutal restraint. That and, uh, minimum of 14% on your amulet. All right, so with the 14% here and the 16% here, we um, have enough R effect to hit the um, 2.8 uh, breakpoint and we get our 90 dollars. Um, and you can find um, Brutal Restraints on this website that I'll link uh, in the description. You come here and it'll load. And then you click uh, Skill Tree View, go to Brutal Restraint. Uh, you have to select the Conqueror, um, even though it doesn't matter, just select anything. Select Stats. And we want the Aura. And a minimum of two. We're going to put it over here. And we'll first deselect everything. And you can select what nodes you want the aura effect to show up on. So we'll just select nodes that are, you know, pretty point efficient to tank. And then we do search. And it'll come up with a whole bunch. You know. You can see this one, it's two here. This is kind of a bad one. Ideally you want them around here, right? This one's not bad, you know, you can I mean, okay, it is pretty bad. This is probably the best one. Well, this, this is the best one in the game. Uh, so what I'm currently using 1908 is pretty good too. You can take this with a intuitive leap. 990, same thing, but just over here. 990 is probably a little bit better. You got some here, you know, I mean, not very good. 566, I was using this too. This one's very good. All right, so this is how you find your brutal restraint. You just click on the trade site. And, you know, you can go buy one. Um, yeah. So guys, that's it. Um, let me know if I missed anything or if you have any other questions in the comments. Um, I'll be making more videos about armor stacker, uh, and simulacrum farming guides or, you know, how to, uh, different tactics you can use in simulacrum to clear more efficiently. So, um, thanks for watching, like, and subscribe and, uh, see you next time.